Vancouver. And I'll start recording as well. Welcome, everyone. I'm Chris Ripley with the Strategic Marketing Group. If somebody could just uh, type over on the bottom uh, of the little sidebar on the right that they can hear me, just type in a Y or a yes. Um, that'll uh, make me feel a little bit better that I'm not just talking to myself here. Um, yeah, good. Thank you very much. I wanted to make sure that was coming up. And uh, before we get started, I'd like to just do a couple of um, questions here. Uh, just to see, you know, what people know and what the level of audience knowledge is. It helps me kind of tailor things to the individual audience. So I'm going to put up a, a poll question here. Are you a, a constant contact customer? And if everybody can just answer that for me, that would be great. So I can see, you know, what kind of audience we got. It looks like we're about two-thirds, one-third here. So uh, that's good. So, you know, there's some folks that haven't used constant contact. While we'll be talking about constant contact a couple of times, certainly during the presentation, if you do any kind of email marketing at all or you're thinking about it, it's a great uh, tool to use. So that's one of the questions. And I'm going to wrap that poll up. Doesn't look like everybody voted, but we got better voter turnout than we do on most elections. So I'm going to wrap that one up. Um, so like I said, it was two-thirds, one-third, almost down the um, middle there. And then if you um, – I want to just know if people do their own email newsletter now. And if you don't – if you do do an email newsletter, please vote. And if you don't do one, don't vote. And that'll give me a, an idea of who isn't doing one at all. So we don't have a, a separate one on that. But um, just to, if everybody could take a vote on that. Looks like we got, you know, a little breakdown here. We're up to 52% have voted. Um, so that's 57 so we're jumping up here as soon as look, it stops. Uh, looks like, so it looks like about 38% don't do an email newsletter and 62% do. And, um, you know, and it looks like about 20% of the people who do are doing it weekly, 7% bi-weekly, 36% monthly, and 36% less than monthly. So that gives you an idea. Um, you know, the folks that are doing it weekly, I applaud you. That's probably where we should be. Uh, that's, you know, that's where you're really going to be successful and get the biggest bang for your buck on your email marketing. So today we're going to talk about the power of the inbox and tips and tricks for successful email marketing. And this is a great seminar. I'm really, as I was going through it before, um, you know, we started today, I'm saying like, this really, we've pulled everything together and brought it into one place for people to understand email marketing and be successful with it. So put everything to the side and uh, we'll get started here. So as I, it seemed like I clicked. Oh, there we go. Now we can get started. All right, uh, let, let me get rid of that little box on the side for the time being. Let me just make sure no hands up. Okay, so a um, little bit about myself. I'm Chris Ripley. I'm a constant contact authorized local expert. That means that I take tests every year and learn the latest trends in email marketing and try to be as familiar with it as possible. I'm a marketing guy in general. I've had my own business strategic marketing group for almost 13 years now where we help small businesses with all elements of their marketing. But certainly, if there's one place where you're going to start with almost any business at all, it should be email marketing. So if you're not doing anything else, this should be the one thing that you're doing. There's my email address. If you want to get in touch with me, um, you can find... Um, you know, my website as well, we'll talk about it at the, at the end. 
Um, Facebook, SMG Marketing, facebook.com backslash SMG Marketing. I encourage you to like our Facebook page. We put lots of great stuff on there. We'll put some videos on there that'll teach you new things. So um, check that out if you can after the webinar. And then on Twitter, I hover close to a thousand followers on Twitter. So I ask you all to follow me on Twitter. You sometimes will see, in addition to lots of business stuff, you'll see, you know, college football or basketball stuff or uh, sometimes political stuff on my Twitter feed as well. But let's get into the seminar. No more about me. First impressions matter. We know this all the time. This is a kind of a fact of life. You know, should your first impression, um, you know, I don't know if um, I didn't look, I didn't see Way, um, Rick and Wayne from MRW Lawns on here, but this is for them. You know, should your first impression be a wilted flower or should it be something nice and lively and that type of thing? And I think everybody knows the answer to that. But when you look at it from an email point of view, you know, you see the email on the left is what people do. And I still run into people who are doing this, who are, you know, going through their outlook and putting 50 names together and sending out emails to people, not even necessarily doing a blind copy. So exposing all their customers' email addresses to the whole world and trying to do it within Outlook. And there are so many downsides to that. You know, versus having this professional looking email that we have on the right hand side and you'll have lots of metrics and you'll have lots of great formatting and that sort of thing. So what is email marketing? Delivering professional communications to an interested audience containing information that the recipient finds valuable that looks great in any inbox. So that that's a lot to say. But that's really what it is. And for those of you who are taking notes, you know, this is really, really what sums it up. And as we get into the presentation, you know, we'll talk about professional email communications, talk about keeping your audience interested, giving them valuable information and make sure that it looks great in any inbox, because we'll get to numbers that will show you how important it is to have your email look great on your phone. You know, half of you all anyway, check your email on your phone. And, you know, based on, you know, the, this group being marketing people and business owners and that sort of thing, probably almost everybody here checks their email on their phone at one time or another. So here's a little quote from Cotton Clouds, uh, Cotton Lovers e-news that they put together. Every time we send out an email, I get a sale in 15 minutes. Overall, I get up to four times as many sales with these newsletters that I did with my old ones. And they've gone from about $50 an order to $100 an order. I don't, Like I said, I don't know if Rick and Wayne from MRW Lawns are on the call, but Rick is certainly, you know, would, would say almost the same thing. And, you know, for... This year in air raiding and overseeding, they had their biggest year ever, and that was because we really hit it hard with email marketing, and they got current customers to do it, and they got new customers to do it as well. So it's also going to create and increase awareness. You know, and here's a, another one from a real estate company. The emails are important reinforcement of the brand. I get calls from people I never met all the time. They get the newsletter or a friend of theirs gets the newsletter and they know and they know I'm the person to call. It really helps establish credibility up front. And this is true in any business. You know, we do we do email newsletters for people who sell oyster barges that float out in the river or the bay where they grow oysters and things like that. And they have a very active newsletter and he's very excited about the results that we've gotten them in the first three months. So this is, you know, it works in pretty much any industry. And the bottom line on all of it is, is it's got to drive revenue and profit. Everything that you do in a business has to be focused in that way. And certainly email marketing is one of those things to do 
as well. So we're going to harness the power of the inbox, your clients' inboxes, your prospects' inboxes. I hope you all are ready. At the beginning, when you were waiting, it said, fasten your seatbelt. So hopefully you've done that already, and we'll get started. And we're going to go through lots of things today. Why email marketing? The power of the inbox, a healthy list. One of the things that, I've, that I'm most passionate about is growing a healthy list. And at the end of the seminar, I'll show you how to get a copy of my book, Leverage Your List, that'll allow you to understand all the things, allow, but it'll give you the understanding of all the things that you'll need to know to grow your list. And we'll talk about some of that stuff today. Great content. That's the number one stumbling block. I was just talking to a new client yesterday. We're building a website for them. And the biggest stumbling block that I have with any client in building a website is getting the content. Email marketing is no different. Create a beautiful mobile-friendly template that matches your brand. And this is critical. The mobile-friendly part is critical. Get your email opened, tracking your results, and then putting it all together. So first, we'll start off with why email marketing. And I, if I haven't made that point already, we're going to reinforce it here. What's the number one app on cell phones? Without a doubt, email. More than half of all emails are opened on a mobile device. And I'm going to talk about something real quick here that I don't, that isn't talked about at other times. If you have a bias against receiving marketing emails, you have to put that to the side a little bit. And this is something that I learned really on in the 13 years that I've had my own business. I worked with a client and he didn't, and this was, you know, we're talking, you know, 10 years ago and we were using constant contact at the time, but I couldn't convince him to use it for one, he had distributors and two, he had customers. And it's funny because we don't work together that much anymore, but occasionally we'll talk, but he's still one of the businesses that are hooked up with me on constant contact and he's still using it. You know, he, it took a, an act of Congress to get him to do it. But once he realized, because he didn't like to receive emails from people, he didn't think anybody liked to receive them. Once he realized that that was kind of silly of him, he went for it. So, you know, this last one about owning a cell, more people own a cell phone than a toothbrush. I'll let you figure that one out. It works everywhere. Email works everywhere. And that's the important element to remember. 88% of people regularly check email on their smartphones. 91% of people check their email daily. You know, the only thing that really gets higher initial impressions than email marketing is text message marketing. And, you know, we're going to talk about combining the two here in a little while in, in terms of how you can collect email addresses via texting. But, you know, and text message marketing, it's a lot tougher. People don't want to give up their cell phones as much. But email marketing, they're going to do it. Email marketing gets delivered, you know, 90 plus percent of the time. Um, and now we're seeing so many of us are seeing Facebook post reach that if you don't pay Facebook, you're getting 2% of the fans. You know, it's very frustrating. Now, you can do better than that. And we have many clients who do better than that. But it takes a little bit more work and it takes other content and a little tip on Facebook to create content. Create some videos and put them on Facebook. You'll see much better um, engagement with videos. And Facebook is just trying to grow video on the platform. So, And this is the key thing here. Email marketing has three times the conversion rate of social media. For every dollar spent on email marketing, there's a $44 average return on investment. And these are solid numbers. You know, I've been seeing the number in the 40s for years from lots of different sources. So, you know, if these numbers don't tell you you should be doing it, I don't know, you know, bonk over the head or something. And why, re why regular email doesn't work? You know, you can only send so many at a time, sending 50 at a time. It's hard to format. 
you know, lists break up uh, more susceptible to filters. You know, they'll stop you. They'll see, oh, here's one with 50 different email addresses on it. Sometimes it'll figure, um, it'll flag spam complaints. It's hard to have cohesive band branding. I've seen people, you know, just recently on a face in a Facebook forum, I saw somebody who had gotten their um, their internet service provider had cut them off from email for spam complaints. So if you want to lose your internet service, this is one way to do it. You know, that's it's one of the few ways to do it, but one way to do it. And then the worst part of it all is you have no tracking or reporting of the email results. And my oyster barge guy, who's now, you know, now we've been doing it, I think four months. We, this is, it's almost February. So that'll be the fifth one. And um, he loves that part of it. And he's able to look and see who clicks on the links in his email. And then he calls him you know, and is able to talk to him about product and prepare him for the spring, which is his busiest time of the year. So he loves being able to do that. Um, you know, with other clients as well, if somebody clicks on a link that sends them to an opportunity on your website, but yet they don't take advantage of that opportunity, you know that they were probably interested, but something held them back from pulling the trigger on it. So here's a chance to, you know, if you have their phone number on your list, which you should you know, certainly be getting name, address, email address, and phone number. And if you can get the, you have their phone number, call them up and find out why. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Email marketing automates best practices for you and makes you look great using a tool like Constant Contact. You know, beautiful, responsive, mobile response responsive, easy to use. You can reinforce your brand identity. Addresses, you know, emails are addressed only to the recipient, so you don't have to have the whole world seeing your list. You can manage lists. With some clients, we keep certainly keep prospects separate from clients, so that allows us to target clients with particular things, target prospects with particular things. You can even go in and if somebody clicked on a link and you've got a list of 28 people who clicked on a link, you can create a list of those people who clicked on the link and send them a follow-up email if you'd like. So there's lots of ways that you can take it to the next level. And you're able to ensure email delivery, track results, and comply with the law. Because in that you know 50-person email that was coming from Outlook or another email, service it may not be compliant with the can spam rules and that sort of thing so i'm going to take just a quick look here does anybody have any questions so far you can um type in a question if you have it and just type it as we're going and i'll take a break every time we hit the outline here and try to see if anybody has any questions but if you have any questions please feel free to just drop them in there and um, I'll get to them while we're going. So I'm going to close it up again and move on and get on to what I said is my favorite topic, growing your list. It's all about how and where you ask. And you have to ask. When I think, when I think back to my days on the local United Way board, and I went to a national conference out in Los Angeles for the United Way, and they were talking about a survey that they had done about why people don't didn't do, donate to the United Way. And the number one reason, believe it or not, why people didn't donate was they had never been asked. So, you know, that let us know we had to ask more. But if you want to grow a great email list, you're going to have to ask. And that's the hard part of it all. It really gets gets easier after that, you know, and you have to ask for permission to send them email. You have to let them know what content to expect and follow through. If you tell somebody that you're going to send them an email every month and you start sending it every three days, they're going to be surprised and they may opt out and they may even report you as spam. 
So, um, you know, offer the opportunity to easily opt out, you know, on that email that was sent from Outlook. There's no opportunity to opt, um, opt out other than to write back and say, please take me off your list. So don't overwhelm them and then follow the rules. And, you know, there are some Canadian rules and there are, even though the Can Spam Act is... Um, the American law and the CASL is the Canadian law that Ted Cruz has to abide by. They're the same, you know, similar things. So you want, you know, now that we've gotten that part out of the way, think about different places where you can ask people to subscribe to your newsletter. And it really can be in any material that you produce. It certainly can be on your website. There's a couple of different ways to do it. It should be prominent. The biggest mistake that people make on their website is they don't provide the people who come to their, to their website an opportunity to learn more about the company and take part in the next step of the sales process. If people don't know what they should be doing next, they're probably not going to be doing anything. Certainly one of the things that you can do to get people to understand what the next step is, is subscribe to your newsletter and then fulfill that subscription. Send them newsletters on a regular basis. But if you have no way to collect information on your website, you're losing a ton of money on your website. You should have a landing page, you should have a video like we have here, something that's going to get people to, to take the next step. And the easiest next step is signing up for a newsletter. You can do more things and free reports and all that. It's a topic for another webinar. But certainly everybody should have on their website in a prominent location, a place for anybody who comes to the website to sign up for your email newsletter. Now you gotta have one first, but hopefully by the time the call is done, the um, 30 or 40% of the people who don't will have changed their minds. Here's, you know, here's where you ask at events, when you have people signing up for events, ask their permission. One of the things that you can do at speaking engagements as well, and this is where the text to join comes in. You can easily just give somebody at a, a speaking event, the opportunity to join your list by texting. QR code, another way to go, sign up for them on a bill or um, in a check presenter when you're in a restaurant, that's another place to go. QR codes on your printed material. Fishbowl, you know, simple fishbowl. And if you're wondering how you get permission when you draw the winner of your fishbowl contest you send everybody an email and you tell them when you send the email you can either give them a link to click to join your email newsletter and don't just say click here to join our email newsletter but if you'd like to know about upcoming events and discounts click here to join our newsletter give them give them an incentive sidewalk sign and here we have again um you can see and, uh, you know, that has the text to join as well. But you got to ask. And here I'll go through real quickly. For those, you know, the 60, 65% of you that have constant contact, this is how you can set up text to join, where you just go ahead and choose a keyword. Keyword could be the name of your business. Maybe you have a special event going on, whatever it might be. And it has to be unique within constant contact, but rarely do I have ever have problems getting a satisfactory keyword for a client. And then you would go ahead and set up some sort of sign like this, or, you know, if you're doing a speaking event and you just put in a slide in your speech, you know, if anybody wants to join my email newsletter, just text Salon Bella to 22828. And then it's going to send them back a text message and they'll put in their email address and they'll join the list. So here, you know, here's how it, you know, how it all works. And I guess, so, you know, after they put that in, 
It sends them a text. It, it goes into the system, sends them a text message back. Please enter your email address. And then it sends them a little email that you can see down here at the bottom right. Thanks. You're now subscribed to our mailing list. Please watch your email for our newsletter. And that may be a little bit difficult for some of you all to see that at the bottom. But you can, you know, you can, and that's a place where you can say, you know, you'll receive our weekly email newsletter plus occasional notice of sales and special events or whatever. Prepare them for it and prepare them and then uphold, live up to those expectations because it's good to do that and it'll also bring you more business. You know, give them a reason to join the list like I was talking about. And there's lots of different reasons. The number one reason why people leave is irrelevant content. And we'll talk a little bit about creating content in a minute or two, but you know, here's things that you can do. On, ongoing education, you know, VIP preference, only people who see, receive this email and bring it in and show it to us on their phone will be able to get this discount. Insider news or exclusive access, maybe you're having an after hours event in your business. This is one, and this is where going back to having some sort of offer on your website you know, an ebook, a white paper, you know, kind of an explanation paper, a guide, one of those things. One of my clients, an auto repair shop, I have it sitting right here, um, create, actually created a real book, what most auto repair shops don't want you to know. And we can do it also as an ebook and put it on his website and capture people that way. So, there's lots of things that you can say. After we get done, hopefully you'll understand some ideas to create content. So, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't always have to be about you. Just be relevant. Figure out how much is enough. Turn questions into content. This is a great one. And images are content as well. One of, one of our clients, uh, Hotel and Conference Center, sends a weekly email newsletter. And one of the things that we include in that e email newsletter is events that are going on in the community around where the Hotel and Conference Center is. And those sometimes get 15 to 20 percent click throughs, which are just incredible numbers. There was a Halloween event right around Halloween that uh, we sent out and we had like 28% of the people who opened the newsletter. And I'm talking like hundreds of people here opened, clicked on this link to find out what was going on in the community for Halloween. So that's a, you know, that's a great way to create content and a little tip. And I'll email this out to everybody uh, when we're done on how to create Google alerts a l e r t s google alerts google alerts are where you go into google you do a search and you do a news search not a regular google search but search the news and at the bottom of the page there's a button that you can click create an alert for this search so what we've done with all of our clients really is we've created google alerts that match with content that might be interested, interesting to their email subscribers. So with the Hotel and Conference Center, we put in the name of the community and we put in events. And whenever there's events in that community, we get emails from Google telling us about it. That becomes newsletter content. And you can do this for any topic at all. So I'll um, send you guys a link to show you how to do Google Alerts. Turn questions into content. What are the top 10, 15, 20 questions that you always get about your product or service? Take one of those questions, write it down. That's great newsletter content. You can even create videos about these. And that's, you know, this is another seminar or webinar topic as well. But Doing questions on YouTube and putting them up, but if you sit, you know, sit in front of your phone and you and you make the video real quick, you can then transcribe the video 
and you can use that in your email newsletter. And then images as well. We have a new Sonic drive-in opening up in my town, and we're doing the social media marketing for them. We do, for, do it for a couple of Sonics. And we've driven it all by images of the construction. Images and video of the construction are how we, and now this is a social media campaign, a little bit different, but email as well, it, it would work there uh, without question. But people have just loved it. We've got over 6,000 likes on this Facebook page in about two months. And we've spent, I would bet now, maybe seven or eight hundred dollars in Facebook advertising. So we've spent some money. But still when you think about how many likes you've gotten for such a small amount of money and the engagement that we get when we put up these images is incredible. So whenever you have something happening, take a picture of it. If you're a you know one of one of our clients does sprinkler systems, you know, take pictures as you're putting in the sprinkler system and that's great content. For your newsletter, you know, or if you've got a, you know, you do sprinkler systems and take a picture of a client that you have with their sprinkler system on. So um, just some ideas, right for your audience, not for you, because that's what's going to keep people interested. And think about who your audience is. And hopefully for most businesses, they have a good idea of who that is. But here you go. You know, I could put my dog in there as well. but. Uh, you know, I, want to, I love smiling dogs. So here's a, you know, here's an email that people really like. So write for your audience, you know, 38% of people unsubscribe if it's boring. So you don't want to have boring. And this is the other one. 32% will spend it, send it to spam if it's irrelevant. So, you know, generally with our clients, once we get started in a regular weekly email newsletter cadence. So people are used to getting their newsletter on a particular day or at a particular time, and they're used to seeing it every week, even if they're not used to it. They're not going to have spam co complaints at all. I mean, we have very few, if any, spam complaints any anytime. But believe me, start sending people email newsletters every three or four or five or six months and don't have, you know, have some irrelevant content, you'll get some bad spam complaints then. How much is Matt is more? And this is very indicative of the emails that we we do. Usually we have three topics in the email, and then we would also add in a coupon as well. But you don't want to have a lot. If someone think about looking at an email on your phone. You're not going to scroll and scroll and scroll forever. And, and we still, I still see lots of these emails that go on forever. And some of them are by very good people who've been doing emails for 10, 15 years, and they haven't changed, and they haven't adjusted to the fact that people are looking, you know, 50% of the people are looking at their email on their cell phone. So... You know, here we can see the more links that you have in an email, the less click-through rate. So that's something to think about as well. You don't need to have a lot too much. So here are some great topics. Talk, you know, I was talking a little about this before a little bit. Turn questions into content. You know, how to ensure my pipes won't burst this winter. You know, if you're a plumber, you bet everybody wants to know the answer to that question. Well, you do an email, five ways to protect your pipes from freezing this winter. You know, and if you look at these the content descriptions, lots of times there are numbers in there. And numbers, you know, three ways, five ways, whatever it might be, are great subject lines. You know, these would be the subject lines that you would be putting into your email. And whenever you can do something like that, it's going to be more effective. You know, it goes back to our, um, I guess we didn't do it on that one, but I was thinking about Charlie's book. We have 10 ways to, um, that you need to, 10 things that you need to know about auto repair shops. So these are just ideas for 
headlines or subject lines or topics for creating content. And like I said before, if you have a hard time writing, just read it into your phone and have somebody transcribe it. You can go to a website called Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R dot com, Fiverr dot com, and five, find somebody on there who will transcribe audio for five dollars. You know, it might be five minutes, ten minutes. You can find people who will do different amounts. But let's say, you know, some of y'all might sit at long traffic lights. Might be a time to create your content for your newsletter. I actually know one of our delegates to the um, to Annapolis here in Waldorf was in the JCs for many years. And she tells me she would write stories. The JCs would have story contests and she would write stories at traffic lights. She kept a pad next on her seat and would write stories at traffic lights. So it makes a great story as well. And here we go. Images, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. 90% of information processed by the brain is visual content. You know, I talked about that a little bit with the Sonic as well, that the Sonic that uh, we're working with, visual content has driven us. But visual is great. So make the images clickable. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You have the ability to do that. Keep action, um, keep key action above the scroll line. That would be what you would see first when you hit the website. So that that's just another thing to think about. And design wisely and limit choices. You don't need to have lots of things going on. If your issue is you have too much content to do a weekly newsletter then very honestly, I would say do more than a weekly newsletter. If you've got that much going on, because that means that your customers and your prospects are probably interested as well. And trust me on this, that you know, if you said to your people, we've just got too much to put in one weekly newsletter, we want to keep you informed, we're going to start doing a newsletter on Monday and Thursday instead of just Monday or whatever it might be. The people who like you and are interested in you, that's not going to be one bit of a problem. The people who might be sitting on the fence and this tips them over across the line and they're not interested anymore probably wouldn't have done business with you anyway. There have been studies done and certainly increasing from one to two a week is not going to have a big effect on your opt-out rate and actually may increase your open rate. I went to a session once put together by a per, an internet marketer who has campaigns that have 30 and 40 emails. And he found that the more email that he sent, the better results that he got. So, you know, going from one to two is not going to kill you. Here's some things on photos. Choose the right side, size, avoid copyright issues. Getty Images takes lots of people to court about using their images. And if they see a Getty image that you haven't paid for on your website, chances are they'll find it and chances are they'll write you a letter telling you to get it right away, down right away or they'll take you to court. So use your own images or stock images. Just do it using going on a Google search for an image and taking that image may not be the legal thing to do. And here's some stock photo sites that you can use. Another photo site, I just couldn't fit it in here, that I like is dollarphotoclub.com. Dollarphotoclub.com. And I we pay them 10 bucks a month, and if we get more than 10, 10 images, we pay a dollar extra, and if we don't use them all, I'm not sure if they carry over or not, but rarely do we not use them all, but that's just a, another one. And there are, you know, there are free images out there, and taking your own images is great, but if you can't find your own, just make sure that you have legal rights to use it. So we want to create... A mobile, I didn't say that I want to create a mobile, beautiful mobile friendly template that matches your brand. And let me check over here. I don't see anything. Hands up. 
if everything looks good. Okay, either I, you guys are all asleep. I can check the sleep thing here. And, uh, well, we did lose one person, but that's about it. So, all right. Um, you know, you want it to look great and be recognizable as you in any inbox. And I can see that's a little typo there. So uh, be recognizing, recognizable as you. So you want to make sure that you select a mobile-friendly template. And this would be if you're in constant contact. If not, the first thing you got to do, if you're in another email service or you're, do, you know, you're doing it some other way, look at it on your smartphone. You got to do that. And um, consistency is critical. That's an element of branding is consistency. And it makes it easier as well because you know what you have to do. Sitting down with this new client yesterday about her website, what's your logo? We're going to use the same colors on the website that are in your logo. She's already picked the logo colors. So obviously the next step is to just use those same colors on the website. So here's, you know, different mobile-friendly templates that you can use, um, how, how frequently you should send them, you know, newsletters, like I said, weekly or monthly, bi-weekly in there as well. Um, the content should be predominantly educational. We like to do about 75 educational, 25% promotional. You know, we'll put, whoops, I'm gonna, I keep hitting my trackpad here. Um, we'll put in coupons in these emails, certainly. Announcements, you know, these are at special events at all. I just got an email from the hotel and conference center. They do a big thing on Valentine's Day. So today we're sending out a special email focusing just on their Valentine's Day thing. So that usually we send send out emails on Monday, but we're going to send this one out on Saturday because of the um, for Valentine's Day. Excuse me. And promotions, you know, whenever it comes up again, you know, biweekly, monthly, whatever you think you need to do it, and. This is, these are just guidelines. Don't think that this is carved in stone. So you got to make sure that you're consistent. I talked about this just a, you know, a minute or two ago. You know, your, your logo and your branding color, use images of your business products and people. Use the same images if you can. You know, I try to use the same pictures all the time, that sort of thing. And the other thing to think about, and this is where people – Sometimes we'll also get stymied in creating content. But if you have a good website or even a great website that has lots of content on it, there's nothing wrong at all for using that content in your email newsletters. You know, my lawn care guys, they have a spring lawn care page, a summer lawn care page, a fall lawn care page and a winter lawn care page. So we could, there's four emails right there. And actually within almost every one of them, there's enough content to do two or three spring lawn care emails in two or three weeks, just with the content on the website. And, you know, as long as I've been doing this 12, 13 years, I've never once had anybody complain about, recycled content. Oh, I saw that on the website that's in the email, or even to the point where I saw that last year in March, and I'm seeing it again this year in March. People In March, people are thinking about spring lawn care, and you want to inform them about that, and they're happy to receive that information. <laughs> Ah, hit the cough button there. So um, here you you know here you see some of that going on, being consistent. Facebook, website, email, all of that stuff. Here you see it again. You know, here's the website, and here's the email. I thought there was another one, but I guess not. So getting your emails opened, frustrating thing for many people. If you want to see what 
industry averages are for getting your emails opened, just do a search for email open rate, email open rate, and that will take you to usually the first listing or the maybe the second is a constant contact report that lists email open rates by industry. It's a great report. Take a look at it. So follow this simple recipe for success. Use a single column template, fewer than three images, fewer than 20 lines of text, no more than three to five links, all the action taking place above the scroll line. That will give you them reasons to pay attention. So other things to think about, who sent it? You have a compelling subject. We talked a little bit about the subject line before with numbers and that sort of thing. So these are this is, you know think about how you process your emails. Who sent it? First thing you look at when you're going through your email, like your you know when you get your mail. If you, you know, many of you might sort your mail over the trash can and just throw in the things that you don't want to look at right away. You do the same thing with your email and the sender and the subject are going to be the first two things that get to you. When was it received? If you're really busy and you send it out on a, you know, if you send out emails on a Monday morning and, and you're a B2B company and everybody's got lots to do on Monday morning, they may not be interested in hearing about your widgets. But if you send it to them on Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock when they're kicking their feet back up and saying it's been a heck of a week, that might be a good time. And you have to think of those things. And we'll talk about these in a minute. And then if you see something great, how easy is it to share it with your friends? So you need to make the from name and the from email recognizable. And this is, there's an economic development agency locally that sends out emails on a regular basis. And it comes from the name, they may have changed this. I don't know, I'm trying to remember, but it used to come from the name of the administrative assistant. And if you didn't know who that was and you're looking through your email, you could just delete that right away. Whereas if it said it came from the economic development department, you might be a little bit more interested. So that's really important to think about. You know, there's so many people out there, you got to do something. And more than a third of people also open an email based on the subject line. So that's where you can go again. You got to be clear. You got to be clever. And you know, here you have a situation, you know, acro yoga at 11,000 feet, you in. That's a, a great subject line to make you wonder, what is this about? Are we going up in an airplane to do yoga? One of the Best subject lines, and I just saw it again, like in the last three or four days. So somebody must have known about this. The subject line H E Y, and that's the end. H E Y. Hey, the in 2012, the Obama campaign raised a ton of money off their email list. You know, and we all heard about it. We're hearing about it with Bernie Sanders. How much money they're raising at? 10 and 25 and $50 increments from, you know, Bernie Sanders has two and a half million people on his list or whatever. And so that when you have that many people on your list, you can do lots of testing. And they were able to, you know, Obama campaign tested everything. The H-E-Y subject line got them the most money. So it isn't even like, it got them stupid people or anything, you know, it got them money. And that's what we're all trying to do. You know, the, the people were curious, what's the hay about, you know, when it's like your name, you know, this is a whole nother seminar here, but your, your name is an activator and that's what you want to do in your subject line. You want to hit people that are going to knock people out of beta mode where they're kind of on autopilot into alpha mode where they're paying attention. So that's a whole other seminar, but we can do that later. So the other thing that you want to use is this teaser text to customize the message. And you can, do, you can control this real well with constant contact. You see the subject line on the phone there, and then you see aspire to higher ground. Join us for this 
And then that's all you can fit in there. And um, I'm going to skip this one right here. Where is that? Oh, right here. Yeah, it was behind. See right here on this email, right in the middle of the page, right above the social media links, aspire to higher ground. In constant contact, when you put that code in there, and they actually call it the pre-header, on mobile phones, whoops, that's what's going to show up right below the subject line. So you can control that. So, you know, whereas the subject line only gives you so many characters, here we're getting double the space that you can use to get people to consider opening your your um, email newsletter. So, you know, you, you can't see the other ones, but the other ones are not good. So that's what you really want to think about as well is that pre-header. Choose your words carefully, you know, no all caps, extensive extens extensive punctuations and you know from the Seinfeld episode we know we shouldn't use too many exclamation points so size matters you know keep it clear keep it clever keep it short and here's some guidelines you know 30 40 characters max typically appear on mo most mobile devices you know 6 to 10 words is best First 11 to 18 words of the pre-header text to entice mobile readers. And like I said, 51% of email is opened on mobile devices. I have some clients that come upwards in 60% being um, on mobile devices. So, you know, create your schedule. How often, whatever you say, stick to it. Okay, I recommend... Weekly, I think that 98% of businesses can do it weekly and the other two will, will be going out of business or something. But do it weekly if you could at all um, help it. Coordinate timing across email and social channels for maximum impact when it's urgent. And again, this email and social channels, let's say if you do an email and then on the same day you spend 10 or 15 bucks on Facebook advertising, there might be a chance that people not only see the email, but they see it on Facebook. It's really reinforcing your message, and it's going to be a lot more effective. Find out what the best time is for you. You know, for years, we've been talking about Tuesday and Wednesday being the best days. Between 11 and 3 p.m. on Tuesday and Wednesday is supposed to be the best, but you got to test and find out for yourself. So here again, you know, like I said, go ahead and, and get that email open rate report on Google. Go search that. And you'll get that constant contact report. Here's where you can see different industries. Constant contact has done testing and found, out, found this to be the best time in these industries to send out emails. And I honestly can't give you the reasons for all that. And sometimes when we test, it defies con conventional wisdom, but these are times and you can, you know, you can look at that report. I don't know if it has all of it, but, you know, here's a little way that you can test, you know, break your audience into two different groups, send it on two different days and watch for the best open rate. Same thing you can do with time, you know, go through your list. If you've got a list of a thousand, you know, either split it up 500 and 500 or however you'd like to do it and test it and see. It's not purely scientific, but if you do it a few times, you'll certainly know the right answers and you'll be in better shape than you wouldn't be if you hadn't tested. So add social sharing, another way to do it and to increase your click-through rates by adding social sharing, certainly something that you can't do if you're sending them out of Outlook or you can't do easily anyway. So tracking your results. So you want to know what reporting matters. Focus on click-through. That's where you're really getting bang for your buck because people are clicking in the body of your email, hopefully to your website or something that you're offering, and use the, the data to make your next decision. So, you know, we all know that Analytics and reports provide a business advantage and help you retain customers. So here's some things that you need to think about in terms of open rate, click-through rate, and shares. 
You know, if you're getting a high open rate, indicates a lot of people are interested. Low open rate, um, it's hard to tell sometimes. And I'll tell you, tell you very honestly, open rates have gone down. A lot of it can be caused by people opening up your emails on their cell phone and having the images turned off. Because the way that they're able to tell your open rate is by downloading what they call a pixel. And it's, you know, one pixel graphic. And when that when your email client calls the server and asks for that, that's how they count, count it open. And, um, you know, it's not always right. But if you're having a low open rate, can check your content at all as well. You know, maybe you're just not that interested or your subject line or your pre-header or who you're sending it from. Had another prospect who I'm meeting with next Tuesday that I talked to yesterday, their email in at their, I'm sorry, their website ended in .org, which is not a business email suffix or whatever, you know, um, you know, whatever they call that. Now I can't think of it, but that could hurt you a ton, you know, and he hadn't thought about it at all because Google doesn't think you're a business necessarily. So um, click through rate, that's really where you can see the rubber meeting the road. It shows who's engaged and taking action. And hopefully over the long term, the goal of your emails, you know, is to make money and people have to take make take action to make money. Sharing indicates that you are, people really like your content. You know, and you see the same thing on Facebook as well but with that. So opt-outs, if you're getting a lot of opt-outs, you got to really take a look at things. Bounce rates. If you get a high bounce rate, you need to clean it up, and you can do that with constant contact. And again, you can't do that if you're sending it through Outlook. So here's just a quick idea of, you know, here's click-through rate. This is what you would see in constant contact for the yoga, yoga studio. So you can see here the third line, 12 people booked because of that email. Now, if you figure, you know, the average yoga appointment for an hour in a group might be 10 or 15 bucks. So you generated 120 to maybe 200 bucks just by that alone. So, and you know, some of these other things you don't know, but that getting the email inspired them to make the move and sign up. So here you go again, high open rate, low click through rate. Um, you know, if you got a high open rate, make it even better, finding better times, better keywords, that type of thing. Low click through rate, you got to work on your call to action. Maybe you're not mobile friendly. Maybe your email is too long. You got a low click through, low open rate, high click through rate. You know, you just got to work on things and, you know, look at your subject line again, make sure you got engaging content. Um, you know, maybe make your links stand out a little bit better. There are just things that you can do to fine tune it. Um, you know, and the same goes with who's opening it. You know, here you here you can see, oops, you know, maybe 51% um, open and 10% are clicking through. So and here's where you see, you are um, super fans, the ones who, those are the ones who click, like I was talking about before. If they're clicking through, those people are prospects. So here you go. Three simple steps to get started. Get your contact list together, even if it's five people. And I'm serious about that. I'm 100% serious about that. If you have five family members or five friends, you know, and include your mom and your grandma and whatever, the grandchildren, whatever it might be, and start sending it. Because they're going to give you feedback, and that's what you need anyway to make it better. So start. You know, there's no better day than today. I know that sounds really trite, but that's what it is. We know what the ideal email should look like. We've talked a lot about that. Again, don't even go crazy on that. If you only had one thing in your email and you got started, that's better to get started than to not do it at all. So here we go. And this is going to, going to kind of take us through everything that we need to, need to do here. You know, the colors, the template. 
the name, the subject line, the preview pane, the share bar, the logo, keep the pictures in there, just keep it to a relatively low number. You know, less is more, focus on relevant content. So here you go. This is what your email should be looking through. Got a call to action. You want to have that. That's just like you want to have on your website. The same thing. If you don't have a call to action, if people don't know what the next step in the sales process is, then you've lost them. And what you've done is just not worth the money and the time that you've spent on it. So what I'm going to do for everybody here on the call is I know this is a tough thing to do. That's why we have clients who ask us to do it. And my offer to you right now is that we will create one and send, create and send one email marketing newsletter for you for only $99 a month. This is a great deal. We started doing this about six months ago. And our business has really exploded on this. We'll create a constant contact account for you and import your lists and prospects. We'll do the, all that for you. We'll create a new e uh, marketing email for your business every week and we'll send it to you for your approval. So we're, we run about a week ahead. So Monday and Tuesday, we're sending out emails to clients that we'll be sending out the next week. So that gives you time to check it over, maybe add things that you would like, that sort of thing. You send it back to us for approval, and then we schedule it. And we schedule it at the best time for you. And we'll meet either on the phone or um, if you're local in person, and we'll plan what the next month's email marketing calendar is going to be. I have some clients that we plan out two, three, four months ahead because they know what's going to be going on in their business. And this is a great deal and it just marks it off your list. You know that every week you're going to have an email going out to your clients, your prospects, how you know, whoever you want to send it to and it's going to be at a professional level and people will be happy about it, you'll be happy about it and you'll get that 44 times return on investment. And if you want to know more about that, you can just go to strategicmarketinggroup.com backslash email marketing, and I'm actually going to um, quickly just go to our website. And if you if you go to the page and you, oops, yeah, if you go to the page and you sit there for a few minutes, you could also get a copy of our free ebook, List Success. So that's one thing that you can do. Here's the information about email marketing. And you'll also see on the web page that we ha you have an opportunity to get a copy of my book, Leverage Your List, and we'll drop that in the mail to you. And we can also do this little search thing that we can do for you and determine what your local score is. So hit the website if you can. And I want to take this back. So we're going to go back over there. And my, I think yeah, that's looking for me. So this this might be the end of it. So um, I, I don't think I can get back, but it was just the thank you slide. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. I hope you got something out of it. And like I said, we're going to send you an email following up, and it'll have information about the $99 email program and how to get a copy of the slide deck that we used and all that. So I really thank everybody for sticking around. Um, I can. If anybody has any questions, uh, please drop them in there. Let me see here if I, yeah, I don't think I've missed any questions. So um, yeah, if you have a question, just type it in, and uh, let me see. There we go. So I didn't want to do that. So oops. Thanks. Okay. The yeah, slides will be coming, Tom. You have no plan. Explain the share option. Okay, James. I'm sorry, I missed that. Um, that basically that would share. You would when you click on the share, it'll send. It'll set. It'll create another email coming from you.
to share with another person. So that would be what you would do with a share. You would be sharing it with other people, or you can share it on Facebook or Twitter or any of those things as well. So either one of those are an option. And that's actually Bob. Yeah, Bob, I was talking about the oyster business. There. So I'm using that. So, yep, so he's just throwing some things. <laughs> thanks, for the, thanks for the plug. Uh, <laughs> oh, I may have more than one of them. So cool. Well, that's going to wrap it up. This has been great. I always enjoy doing these things, and uh, this one has been very good. So I thank you all for attending. And um, uh, Jane, we got – Jane, I work – on an enterprise-wide project, any tips when sending emails to employ, gain employees uh, buy-in internally? You know, much the same thing. I'm, I, I, I'm teaching an organizational communication class at UMUC this semester. So I think that, you know, you have to use the same topics. I was in retail for 22 years. I was the store manager of a department store. And communication was critical. And I think that you want to be able to do the same thing. You know, who it's coming from, some sort of subject line that's going to get them to open the email if you're having a, an issue with people opening the email. And then when they open it, the same, you know, content that's quick, to the point, has images, and it gives them something that they think is valuable to them. Um, and I... I'd be glad, Jana, I'd be glad to talk to you more about that. But that, you know, that's a few ideas on um, that. And then we got Tina here as well. I collect email addresses. As in. Can you use those emails? What, what I'd be doing on that, Tina, Tina's asking when should we collect email addresses to send reservations, confirmations. Can we... Use those emails for marketing without breaking the canned spam law. You would have to get them to opt in. So when you send them the reservation confirmation, include a line right below there. You know, we'd love to have you subscribe to our newsletter. We give special deals or whatever the reasons are that people might want to subscribe to their your newsletter. Please just click on this link to subscribe to our newsletter and if you're doing them both in constant contact which i kind of doubt you are but you could then you know it would just be a different list that you would want to have them on and that would be the list of people reservation people who opted in to receive the newsletter that would be what you would call the list so as long as people click on a link in the reservation confirmation because we actually even do that with um, some clients where we, whoops, I'm just having a brain freeze here. Oh, when we said it's with the hotel and conference center. And after their visit, after somebody visits them, we send them an email to find out how the visit was and get feedback and that sort of thing. And if we, we could just, that's a good idea. We might even start doing that. In that, we should include a link to our email um, newsletter and ask them if they want to join. Thanks. I just worked that through there, and there's another way that I can help that client. So thanks for the great question, Tina. And, um, you know, again, if anybody wants to contact me with additional questions, I'd be glad to answer them as well. Those are all great questions, and I think I got them all. I apologize for not getting them sooner. But, uh, again, I think that's it. I'm going to scroll down. Thanks from Jenna, and you guys have a great day. Thank you very much.